There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Finally, it's on this radio. Voice of America International Broadcast, and now the news. Victims continue to pour into refugee camps as the bombing continues. Please. I can hear them in the night. I can hear them in the daylight. They're coming for us, but they'll have bodies to step over. More bodies than they can count. There will be no survivors. The road of the righteous shall not be breached. No illusion tempt thee from thy path. They are coming for you. Remember my words and make your peace, brothers and sisters, because no one gets out of here alive. <laughs> Have you ever driven cross country? I don't know what I was thinking, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. Get away from it all, see the USA. Except that it's more than you bargained for. You try to keep a schedule, so you push yourself. You eat when you can, and keep the gas tank full. But you'd swear it's never going to end. After a while, the only thing you want is to rest. You're so tired, you start to see things that aren't really there. The highway winds ahead like a flat ribbon, and there's only the sound of the engine. And then suddenly, without warning, something moves out there. A jackrabbit, maybe, a small animal darting across your path. Or it might be your eyes playing tricks. But at the last minute, you swerve just the same, and something goes wrong. Very dreadfully wrong. This can't be happening. Please, stop. Somebody help! Her name is Nan Adams. She's 27 years old. Her occupation? Buyer at a New York department store. At present on vacation, driving cross-country from Manhattan to Los Angeles, California. She's gone just far enough to wear through the bald spot on her right front tire. But with any luck, she'll survive this little setback. Minor incident on Highway 11 in Pennsylvania, perhaps to be filed under Accidents You Walk Away From, a conversational item for the winter months back home when Miss Adams talks of her trip to her friends over a glass of wine. What she doesn't know yet is that from this moment on, she won't be alone. For the remainder of the trip, her companion will be terror, her route, fear, her destination, quite unknown because Miss Adams has just crossed an invisible line not on any map, one that leads directly into the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, The Hitchhiker, starring Kate Jackson with Stacy Keach as your narrator. How's it coming? Almost finished. I'm so sorry to trouble you. Hey, that's my job. Good thing I drove by. Yes, it is. There are no phones for miles. I don't know what I would have done. It's no real damage. At least you didn't flip the car. Thank God. Just let me tighten these lug nuts here and you're on your way. I should know how to do that. Would you believe I've never changed a tire in my life? You're not the only one. That's why I stay in business. Lots of flats out here. That, vapor lock, cars that overheat. Run out of gas? I keep a five-gallon can in the truck. Hmm. I don't know what happened exactly. How fast were you going, lady? Sixty, sixty-five, something like that. <laughs> that all? I guess I wasn't paying attention. It happens. Got to keep your eyes on the road, though. I thought I saw something. Like what? I don't know. Something moving. You think it could have been a mirage? 
A what? A mirage. Some sort of optical illusion with the sun on the windshield or... <laughs> you want my advice? Check into a motel and get some sleep. Too long behind the wheel, you start to lose it. But I'm behind schedule. It ain't worth it. You see those skid marks? 65 miles an hour and you hit a blowout and hit the shoulder? Soft as pudding. Lady, you're on the side of the angels. By rights, you shouldn't need a mechanic. Somebody should have called for a hearse. I take your point. How's that bump on your forehead? Oh, fine. Got a first aid kit if you need it. No, no, no. It's just a scratch. There you go. Spare's ready to roll. How much do I owe you? Uh, just follow me into town. I'll see if I can fix you up with another tire. You don't want to run the rest of the way without a backup. No, I suppose I don't. Huh. Oh, great. Something wrong? What? Not out of gas, are you? I don't think so. Pump the pedal a few times. Careful not to flood it. I won't. It's just that... I was wondering... Yeah? That man. Man? Over there. I, I don't know where he came from, but shouldn't one of us give him a ride? He looks like he needs it. What man? Behind us, uh, about 50 yards. I can see him in my rearview mirror. He's watching us. I don't see anything. Oh. Well, neither do I now. I could have sworn somebody was standing there by the side of the road. <laughs> you see what happens when you try to drive straight through? Come on, we'll get you fixed up at the station. Yes, of course. Uh, let's see. 45 for a new tire, plus 5 for the mounting and balancing, and the tax. That doesn't seem nearly enough. What about the service call? Ah, uh, no charge. I was on my way back anyway. Make it fifty-three fifty. Huh. I guess it's a lot cheaper than a funeral. You could say that again. You're very kind. Here you go. Six fifty change. I checked your other tires while I was at it. They look okay. Thank you so much. Anything wrong? No. Nothing's wrong. I was just looking at that... that hitchhiker. What hitchhiker? Outside, by the pumps. Where? He's gone now. Yep. That he is. Somebody must have picked him up. Uh, one of the truckers, most likely. It's strange. I saw him before, too. When you were changing the tire. Out on the highway. Uh-huh. I'm sure it was the same man. Must have gotten himself a lift then, too, right after we passed him. Yes. That must be it. Well, I'd better get going or I'll never make L.A. Shouldn't be too hard. Brand new car, good weather. Ought to make it easy. Better take a rest first, though. Oh, I can't. I'm already a day late. Get some food in you, at least. If you want to make it in one piece. Yes, yes, I... Look at that. Huh? He didn't get a lift. He didn't? I just saw him again. You saw... The hitchhiker. Oh, well, it's no business of mine. That's the truth. Thanks very much for all your help. Okay, miss. Have a nice, safe trip. Thank you, I will. <laughs> hitchhiker. What's she talking about anyway? I didn't see no hitchhiker. Oh, it can't be the same man. It, it can't. Who is he? I saw him again, 50 miles farther on. It was impossible, of course, but I did. And then again on the long, straight stretch through Virginia. Not menacing, really. An ordinary man. If anything, drab. A little mousy. Just a shabby, silly-looking scarecrow man. I shouldn't even think about him at all. But it's the coincidence of the thing. The fact that, that wherever I go, there he is. And I think he sees me. 
His eyes are always turned my way. Is he smiling? Why? Whenever I stop, I see him. No matter how far I travel or how fast I go, he's ahead of me. He's always ahead of me. Yes, officer? Hold up, miss. Is something the matter? I can't let you pass just yet. Why not? Roadblock ahead. A roadblock? What for? Construction. Some big trucks blocking the way. Just a few more minutes. All right. I'll wave you on. Sit tight for now. This could take all night. Where's my map? I can't believe it. There is no other way. This is the only road west. Oh, no. It can't be, but it is. It's him. Going west, you say? I didn't say anything. I thought I heard. No, uh, no, I'm not going west. I'm sorry. I'm just going up the road a little ways. I'm really very sorry, but I can't help you. Are you sure? Oh, please. Oh, it has to stop. That's true. Miss. Miss, please. You, you can't go through yet. It is safe. <laughs> I'm on the turnpike now, a more secure feeling. And yet, I don't know why it is, but I'm frightened. A funny thing, fear. I've never known it before, not really, not like this. But now here it is, there's no denying it. Can't quite put it into words, a fear that's just about as vague as its object. And that's the trouble. It isn't really a fear, not exactly. That may be the wrong term, but I feel something. What should I call it? A sense of disquiet. The feeling that things are a little tilted, a little off somehow. The feeling you get when something's wrong, but you don't quite know what it is yet. It's vague because that's what that hitchhiker is. He's vague. Like a charcoal sketch that somebody's made and then half rubbed off the paper, leaving only a kind of indistinct outline. I wonder why it is he's always there. I wonder why I can't shake him. But most of all, I wonder why I can't stop thinking about him. It was the kind of place you never expect to find in the middle of the night. Bright lights, people, ordinary people, talking about ordinary things, even making jokes. I felt safe again for a time. Part of me didn't want to leave. Dessert, miss? Uh, what did you say? Still got some pie left. Apple, blueberry, lemon meringue. Uh, well, let me check on the apple. <laughs> Trucker came through a little while ago, ordered three pieces with ice cream. I'm sorry, I... No, no thank you. Sure? It's mighty good. More coffee? Sure. Ought to have more than coffee, though. I guess I don't have much of an appetite. Driving alone? Yes, I am. Where to? All the way to California. Whew, no kidding. <laughs> That's a haul. Couldn't get me to drive all that way. At least not by my lonesome. Actually, I was looking forward to it. You were? In the beginning. You see... End of the counter, Angie. Two burger baskets to go. Coming up. <laughs> Well, as man said when he kissed the cow, everyone to his own taste. <laughs> you got that right, Angie. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, I keep telling her she ought to be on television. Mm. How much do I owe you? Let's see. Here you go. Uh, put it on mine, Rich. That's all right. I said I got it for you. No, really. Say, don't I know you from somewhere? I seriously doubt it. Come on over here a minute. Give the change to the waitress, will you? Sure thing. Hey, girlie, why don't you be friendly? It's mighty lonely driving long distance. All right, that's enough. This is no girly. This is a lady. Now knock it off. <laughs> sure, Rich. I'll see you next week. Thank you, but you didn't have to do that. Hey, listen. Do yourself a favor. There's a decent motel a couple blocks from here. You look like you can use it. 
What about a gas station? There's one right next to it. Still open, too. I do need to fill up. Hey, you can't do better than to buy the weed. It's nice and clean. I suppose I could. Do you get many hitchhikers? Hitchhikers? You mean around here? It's pretty rare, is it? Yeah, I'll say. There's no road, just the turnpike. Guy'd be a fool hitching a ride here. I mean, look at it. Miles and miles of straightaway and practically no speed limit. Now, what car's going to stop and pick up a guy under those conditions? Would you? No. No, I probably wouldn't. In fact, I'm sure of it. Of course, a guy might get a lift before the turnpike starts. By the toll house or something. But then it'd be one long ride, and most cars wouldn't pick up a guy for that long a ride. And, you know, this is kind of lonely country out here. Flatlands and hills and that sort of thing. You didn't see any hitchers, did you? Oh, no. No, I haven't seen anyone like that. I was just wondering, that's all. Anything wrong, miss? Oh, I don't know. I was just thinking. Something on your mind? I was just thinking how good it'll be to stop driving. It's getting so that I actually hate that car. I was in no hurry to get back on the turnpike. The all-night gas station was just where he said it was, a couple of blocks south, near the railroad tracks. There was no one around, no one at all. To tell the truth, I felt relieved, even if it was self-serve. You'd think I'd have plenty of experience by now pumping my own gas, but I was used to full service. There was only a little booth where you pay when you're finished. It, it's not working. Can someone please show me how to start the pump? Hello? Hello in there? Please, I want to buy some gas. If there was a night man on duty, he must have taken a break. There was nothing for me to do but wait until he came back. The lot was bright enough with those, what are they called, sodium vapor lights? There was absolutely nothing that didn't show. And maybe that was why I began to get the feeling again. Part of it was the way everything beyond the station was pitch black. I was in an island of light, and the light wasn't normal. That was the other part. Sodium vapor bulbs put out a kind of orange glow instead of white, so some things take on a different color. My skin, for instance, it was, well, a sickly green I stood there looking at my arms and hands and listening to the traffic on the turnpike and I felt it before I saw it, felt it and heard it. It's him. I know it is. Where is he? Where? Get away from me! Do you hear me? Stay back! I couldn't see him, but I didn't have to. I knew who it was. Yeah, can I help you? I need a room. For how long? Till morning. Just you? That's right. Fill out this card. I wonder, uh, could I see the room? Huh? What for? They're all the same. If, if you don't mind. <sighs> Come on, then. Just clean it, new towels, everything. That's fine. How's the lock? The lock? On the door. It works fine. Ah, there's a deadbolt, too. See, case hardened steel. Nobody gets in or out unless you open it from the inside. Good. Need privacy, do you? I just sleep better when I know everything's secure. (laughs) Traveling alone, huh? Business trip, is it? Yes, it is. Don't worry about me. I'll be up at the crack of dawn. As soon as I lay my head down for a few hours. Thanks. Bye now. Uh, one thing. Yes? Cash or credit, no checks. In advance. Oh, of course. Uh, I'll get you change. Keep it, thank you. Good night. I told myself I'd be safe enough, at least for a while. I had to rest sometime. Mmm, clean sheets. What was that? Nobody out there. 
must be my imagination. Yeah, that's it. Besides, no one can get in. <gasps> what was that? It's in the room. <sighs> A leaky shower head. But I knew. Already I knew. Even if I hadn't thought it through. Something the desk clerk said about nothing getting in. Or out. I imagined myself lying in bed in the dark, waiting for another sound. And me trapped with it here in this room. No, that wasn't acceptable. Not acceptable at all. I had to go back to the turnpike where I belong. Good, the on-ramp. All I have to do is cross the tracks. No. It can't be a train at this time of night. It's ridiculous. I have to get across. Come on, I can make it. There's plenty of time. This going my way? Get away from my car! It has to start. It has to. This can't be happening. It was him. It was. Where are you? What do you want from me? The fear is no longer vague. The terror isn't formless. It has a form. He was beckoning, that drab, skinny man in the cheap, shabby suit. He was beckoning me. He wanted me to start across the tracks, for the car to stall. He wanted me to die. Now I don't know what to do. Whether I should turn around and go back to New York or go on. Thoughts stab at my brain. Ugly, frightened thoughts. Projections of tomorrow and the next day. Driving through plains. Driving through the desert. Unspeakably, nightmarishly alone. And I know I'll see him again. I'll see him at detours. At other railroad crossings. He'll be looking at me at stoplights. If I stay at another motel, I'll glance through the window and see him outside. Waiting. I don't know what to do now. I just don't know. Three days and three nights now. Past Tennessee into Arkansas, through the Ozark country, and into Oklahoma and Texas. Stop for coffee and then drive on. Stop for food and drive. Stop for coffee, and the routine goes on. Towns without names pass by. Landscapes without form. The numbers on the dashboard clock change, and I don't even see them now. It isn't a trip, it's flight. Route 80 isn't a highway anymore. It's a means of escape, so I keep going. Conscious of only one thing, I've got to get where I'm going before that hitchhiker closes in. Halfway across Texas, 10 o'clock at night, the fourth day. The engine stops, and I sit there in the front seat, chilled with fear. And I can hardly believe it. Out of gas. I can't believe this. I should have stopped earlier, and now it's too late. Wait. That sign. Yes. Gas eats 500 feet. I can see it from here. Please, someone. You can't be closed. Yeah, what is it? What do you want? I ran out of gas. I'm just a quarter of a mile down the road. Come back in the morning. Please. I can't stay here till then. It must be past midnight. No, it isn't. It's not even 11 o'clock. 
Well, we close up here at nine. I'm sorry. Try try the uh, honeysuckle lodge. They got a gas pump there. It's about a mile or so away. Please, I can't walk any farther. <sighs> Little lady, I'd like to help you, but I've been up since five this morning, and I'm just dead now. Like I told you, it's only a mile or so to the honeysuckle lodge. But I've got to have a can of gas. I can't stay out here by myself. You see, there's a man. There's a very suspicious-looking man. Henry, Henry, who is it, Henry? Come it's on. it's nobody, Mother. Just a gal in a fancy suit. Go back to bed. Now, what about this man? What was he doing? N nothing. Nothing, huh? Well, then what of it? That's not something to wake a man in the middle of his sleep about. I'm trying to tell you. Now listen, young woman. You must have taken a nip or something. If you haven't got anything better to do than wake decent folks out of their hard-earned sleep. But he looked as if he was going to rob me. Well, if he does, you come back and I'll call the sheriff for you. Who's there? Come out into the light so I can see you. You have to stop following me. Stop right now or I'll scream. There are people inside. They'll hear and... Lady? What did you say? I said, what's the matter, lady? Yes. That's what I am. That's exactly what I am. A lady. What are you doing out so late? What am I... You work here? This your place? No. My car's just up the road. You see, I, I ran out of gas. The man won't give me any. I saw the car. You left your keys in it. I turned the lights off, though. So the battery wouldn't run down. Do you live around here? Nope. I'm coming back from leave. Leave? Of course. The uniform. Are you in the Navy? Sure am. Ever see a fella in a sailor suit that wasn't? No, I guess I haven't. Where are you headed? Going back to my ship. She's in San Diego. That's where I'm heading. San Diego, California. Would you like a ride? You kidding? No, I mean it. I'll take you all the way to San Diego. Will you drive with me? You don't have to ask me twice, lady. You've got yourself a rider. I don't have any gas, though. I will fix that. You tried already? The man's in bed. He can't be bothered. Well, let's get him out of bed. All he needs a couple of gallons. I've seen some all night gas station signs. There must be plenty up ahead. Let's go, Pop! You got some customers out here! I can drive if you want. Oh, that's all right. I'm used to it. You mind if I take off my shoes? My feet feel like two hot bricks. Y you go right ahead. Oh, I keep thinking I'll wake up or something. Middle of the night. No cars, no nothing, and who do I meet? A lady who looks like a movie star. Uh huh. Hardly. Brand new car and a ride all the way to the coast. When I tell the guys back on the ship, you know the odds for even one guy believing me? <laughs> I'll write up an affidavit for you, and we'll get a notary to sign it. <laughs> Anytime. You hitchhike much? I'm back and forth on leave. It's tough sometimes in the open country. Trucks aren't so bad. They'll pick you up. But you have trouble with cars. People in cars don't like to pick up hitchhikers at night. I suppose not. But I'll bet. I'll bet if you got a good ride in a nice car, you could go places faster than, say, a person in another car. I... I... I suppose. Take me, for instance. Suppose I'm driving across the country at a nice steady clip of about, say, 55 miles an hour. Well, couldn't a guy like you, just standing beside the road waiting for lifts, beat me to town after town? Provided you got picked up every time in a car going 65 to 70 miles an hour? I guess. Maybe he could and maybe he couldn't. What difference does it make? Oh, it's no difference. It's just kind of a crazy idea I've had after so long in this car. <laughs> That's one way to pass the time. Oh, no! Hey, what's going on? What's the matter? Did you see him? See who? That man. What man? The one who was standing beside the barbed wire fence. I didn't see anybody. That wasn't nothing but a bunch of steers in the moonlight. What do you think you're doing? Trying to run into a fence post? There was a man. A gray, thin kind of man with an overnight bag in his hand. You must be overtired or something, lady. There was nothing there but some cattle and a fence. I saw him. In fact, there he is now. Hey, give me that wheel.
Lady, I'm taking charge of the keys. Maybe you'd better let me drive after all. You must have seen him that time. I didn't see anybody. What were you trying to do? Hit him. Huh? That's right, I was trying to hit him. Maybe if I could kill him, I could make him stop. You see, what are you doing? What does it look like? Where are you going? No place in particular, lady. Just out of plain sight. Any place that puts some distance between me and this automobile. Please don't get out. I'll drive more carefully from now on, I promise. No way, baby. I kind of like to get back to my ship in one piece. And driving with you? That's a pretty lousy guarantee I'd ever make it. Please. Please, I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. Please don't go. I'm sorry, lady. You'll have to excuse me. You can't go. You don't understand. You can't. Look, look, I'll take you right into San Diego. I'll take you to the docks. I give you my word. Sure. Seeing elephants, skyscrapers, and make-believe people all the way. Thanks, but no thanks. Look, I like you. I like you very much. That's the reason I picked you up. We could, we could be friends. Good friends. I'd like you to take me out. Really, please. Sorry, lady. Believe me, you'll never know how sorry. Listen, I know you think I'm out of my mind or something, but this man, I've been seeing this man all the way across the country. He's been following me. If you could only help me, stay with me until I reach the coast. Honey, what you need is a good night's sleep. You don't need a boyfriend, just a good night's sleep. Here's your keys. See you around. Please come back! There is nothing to do but drive on into the next day. As the air grows warmer, the car gets hotter than it ever has, and you begin to wonder if the tires are going to melt. The windshield colors over with smashed insects, wasps and bees and dragonflies all stuck to the glass. And if you're driving west into the sun, it gets hard to find your way. But I see him again in the middle of the Texas prairies. And then everywhere, wherever I pull off, even for a moment, for gas, for oil, for a drink of pop, a cup of coffee, a sandwich, he's there. He's outside the entrance to a rest stop near El Paso. He's sitting by a drinking fountain and a little camping spot on the border of New Mexico. He's waiting for me outside the Navajo Reservation where I check my tires. I see him again when I buy 12 gallons of gas in Arizona. He's everywhere I go, always ahead of me, always looking at me, always waiting for me. Now I'm outside a diner near Tucson. There's a phone booth, and I'm going to call home. Back to New York. Put in a call to my mother so I can speak to someone familiar. Someone I love. Someone who will bring back reality for me. Just a voice, that's all. But I know it will be enough. Just a warm, familiar voice so I won't lose my mind. I'd like to make a call to my home in New York City. What is the number, please? Trafalgar 41098. Thank you. That'll be $3.60 for the first three minutes. Oh, I seem to be short. I thought I had enough. $3 and... I could go inside and get change. Look, can't you put it through? I have to talk to my mother. Would you like to call collect? Yes, yes, that's it. Thank you, operator. What number are you calling from? Wait. <sighs> There's no number. It's been scratched off. If you can't give me the number... Don't hang up. Here, I, I found some coins. I'll put them in now. 50 cents more, please. Y yes, yes, I know. I've got it. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Mrs. Adams Residence. Hello? Hello, Mother? This is the home of Mrs. Adams. Who did you wish to speak to? Who's this? This is Mrs. Whitney. Mrs. Whitney? I don't know any Mrs. Whitney. Is this Trafalgar 41098? Yes. Where's my mother? Where's Mrs. Adams? Well, Mrs. Adams is not at home. She's still in the hospital. The hospital? Who's 
calling. Is this a member of the family? What's she in the hospital for? Well, she's been bedridden for five days. Nervous breakdown. Who is calling? Nervous breakdown? But there's nothing wrong with my mother. She's never had any problems. It's all taken place since the death of her daughter. The death of her daughter? What are you talking about? What do you mean, the death of her daughter? Who is this? What number is this? It's all been very sudden. Nan was killed just five days ago in an automobile accident in Pennsylvania. A tire blew out and her car turned over. Please deposit 60 cents more if you wish to continue this call. Please deposit 60 cents. Please deposit 60 cents. Please deposit 60 cents. Very odd, but the fear has left me. I'm numb now. I have no feeling. It's as if someone pulled out a kind of plug in me and every emotion, including fear, is drained away. And I'm only a cold shell. I'm conscious of the things around me, the vast, soulless night of Arizona, the frantically blinking stars that look down from the darkness. Ahead of me stretches a thousand miles of empty mesa, mountains, prairies, desert, and somewhere among them, he's waiting. Somewhere I'll find out who he is and what he wants. Though just now, for the first time, looking out at the night, I think I know. I know that he's here now without even looking in the rearview mirror. I believe you're going my way. Yes. Yes, of course I am. Nan Adams, age 27. She thought she'd take a drive to California. To Los Angeles. She didn't make it because of a detour through the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at TwilightZoneRadio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. The Hitchhiker, starring Kate Jackson, with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etcheson and based on a script by Rod Serling from a story by Lucille Fletcher. Heard in the cast were Mike Starr, Nick DiGiulio, Todd Manley, Peter DeFaria, Turk Muller, Doug James, Kurt Nabig, Carl Amari, Deb Dotzer, and Meg Falcon. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etcheson, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors, and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>